All right, now to the war in the Middle East. Israeli airstrikes overnight killed 11 people in central Gaza, including a woman and three children. That is according to Palestinian health officials. This just days after President Biden announced a plan for ending Israel's war with Hamas, a proposal Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu seems to be distancing himself from. During a meeting with Knesset's Foreign Affair and Security Committee, Netanyahu said, quote, the claim that we agree to a ceasefire without our conditions being met is not true. This is causing some confusion. Originally, the president presented the plan as an Israeli one, but Netanyahu says that what he unveiled is not the entire plan. All right. To, bring, to discuss this and more, let's bring in Stephen Cook. He is a member of the Council of Foreign Relations. His book, The End of Ambition, America's Past, Present, and future in the Middle East will be released this month. So good to be with you today. Uh, uh, President Biden seemed to put the Israeli prime minister on the spot with this proposal. I want to get your thoughts on that. And do you think that was intentional? Well, I think the president was trying to find the points of agreement between the Israeli government and Hamas and then publicly put pressure on both of those uh, parties. Um, it should be um, be pointed out that the what the White House says the president presented was the administration's interpretation of the Israeli proposal. So when Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, objects to certain aspects of what President Biden is uh, said on Friday, he does stand on some. Uh, he, he he's not wrong. Um, the Israeli the the White House has said that this is their interpretation of the Israeli plan. And Stephen, can you quickly recap for us what's included in this proposal? Well, there's three phases. The first one would be a six-week ceasefire in which the Israeli forces would withdraw from Palestinian uh, population areas, and there would be uh, a release of some hostages in exchange for some Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails. That would lead to a second phase, which would be a more permanent ceasefire, uh, and that would result in the release of the rest of the remaining hostages, as well as additional Palestinian prisoners. And then the third phase would be the reconstruction of the Gaza Strip, and ultimately, it's hoped, negotiations towards a two-state solution. I think that the Israelis object to the idea that they would be um, ending this conflict before their military objectives are met. Yeah, and also uh, a short time ago, as you know, Israel confirmed the deaths of four more hostages uh, that are being held by Hamas. Do you think that Netanyahu has a choice here to make, um, getting the hostages back with a truce or his government's survival? What do you think? Well, that has been the dilemma all along, because Netanyahu's partners to his right in the government um, want to pursue the military operations until the complete destruction of Hamas, where there is not an insignificant number of Israelis who also would prefer to get the hostages back. Prime Minister Netanyahu has tried to square um, those two positions by pursuing military operations, as well as engaging in negotiations, believing that the military pressure on Hamas would result in the release of hostages. That has not happened, at least hasn't happened since last November. Um, but nevertheless, that is his theory of the case. We only have maybe about 20 seconds left or so, but where do you see this going? I mean, do you think they can reach an agreement on the ceasefire? Well, the Israelis have indicated that they agree with uh, some reservations. Everybody's waiting to hear from Hamas, which thinks it's winning the conflict. All right, we're going to leave it right there. Stephen, thank you so much for your analysis. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.